Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And with your permission, I will take questions 2 and 17 together. The Government intends to enact reforms to improve the building's insurance market by banning commissions, increasing transparency of information and preventing unjustified legal costs when challenging premiums. We are also pressing the insurance industry to launch its scheme. 95 per cent of all identified unsafe high-rise ACM buildings and 400 buildings supported by the Building Safety Fund have either completed or started remediation work. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I have raised before in the House the predicament of residents of Barrier Point in my constituency whose insurance premiums have risen sixfold. Uh, the Secretary of State told me in January that such insurers were, quote, squarely in his gun sights. Can the Minister offer any prospect of imminent relief to my constituents, some of whom face an additional demand of £6,000 this year? I completely appreciate the point that the Honourable Gentleman, right Honourable Gentleman is making. That is why I have met with the ABI multiple times, the Association of British Insurers multiple times, in just the last few weeks alone. I am hopeful that their scheme, which they are hoping to bring forward with the insurance industry, will come forward uh, in the next few weeks or so. And equally later today, I am meeting again the Broker Association to talk to them about how they reduce commissions in advance of the work that the Secretary of State has already announced to ban them. Janet David. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In my constituency, there are two main housing developments that have been promised me remediation work to fix the unsafe cladding in their building. Um, on their building. I hope that the Minister is fully aware that individuals and families living in unsafe buildings has meant their lives are being put on hold. These holders cannot sell their homes, they cannot move home, they cannot staircase, and for some they have had to put start in the family on hold. Will the Minister acknowledge that this is unacceptable and will they agree to implement a time frame so that work is prioritised by housing providers and building firms? I'm grateful to the Honourable Lady for highlighting the challenges which her constituencies are facing. I absolutely appreciate the point that she is making in terms of the challenges. That is why we are trying to push forward remediation as quickly as we are able to do so. But I would just highlight that since the announcement by the big six lenders in December taking effect in January, it should now be possible for more owners and more leaseholders in properties like this who wish to buy, sell or remortgage to be able to do so. And the early data which we are receiving back into the Department indicates that while the market will take some time to become more functional, it is moving in the right direction. Robert Neil. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, would the Minister re recognise that this is not just a question of ridiculously escalating premiums? There is also a problem that my constituents in North Point in Bromley have found, again I mentioned this in the House before, where their previous insurers of EBA, who had insured them up until the Grenfell fire, are refusing to quote at all. And this withdrawal from the market is putting many uh, people under real pressure. This is a building where the cladding has already been removed. The risk, is re the risk has gone. Uh, the, uh, uh, they have a zero claims record, but a major firm like Aviva won't even quote. There's a market failure here, uh, just as we dealt with EWS1s when there was a withdrawal <laughs> of, um, uh, of, of insurance for um, professional negligence insurance. Can we please intervene and make sure people at least come into the market properly? Yeah. Well, that makes an important point. That's exactly why we are trying to encourage and work with the ABI and the large insurers to bring forward uh, this new scheme, which should help the kind of uh, issues which he has been he has highlighted. I hope we will have more news on that in the coming weeks ahead. If it doesn't, I will be very keen to talk to him and to his residents about how we can move forward. We now try Bedford's final question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Residents in Master Gunner Place in my constituency are still paying for a waking watch despite a new fire alarm being introduced. Now, this, these properties were built by countryside properties with major defects in them. They're now owned by Sumnas. And I want to know what the minister is going to do to take these people to task because they are costing my constituents a lot of money which should have been resolved before. Well, the Honourable Gentleman has seen that we have recently reopened the Waking Watch Fund, but on the specific issue that he has raised, I would be happy to meet with him because I would want to also understand why this has not been removed as a result of the money spent. 